Welcome to Maintenance Monday, and we're talking about tools today. These tools you may use, you may not, um, but the tools I have on this table are for the inexperienced and experienced RVer alike. We're gonna go through the basic stuff that I would recommend, and we're just gonna dig right in, so let's go. So, let's talk about screwdrivers. I have a selection of screwdrivers here, various sizes and flatheads. I recommend, uh, you know, kind of a medium to large flathead all the way down to your stubby style uh, flathead. Moving into your Phillips heads, I recommend that you have a number three Phillips, which is this size, a number two Phillips, which is this size, and a number one Phillips, which is this size. Also, a stubby is nice because you can get into tight areas where you may not be able to get into with the larger handles. Now, keep in mind, I'm gonna mention this, uh, whatever tools you decide to put on your rig, keep in mind that these weigh a lot. Okay, this screwdriver may not weigh much, but you add in all these screwdrivers and it adds up. So know the weights on your RV, know what you can carry, and know what's important to getting the job done. If you're working on your own rig from start to finish and you do all your own maintenance, then you might want most of what's on this table. If you're only getting the emergency essentials to keep you on the road, keep you camping, then you may not want everything that's on this table. And if you plan on taking it in wherever you plan on going and calling for roadside assistance or calling for a technician to come out and do a service call, then you may not want much of any of this at all. So it'll save you a lot of weight. Okay, moving on. Screwdrivers, continuing on with this. Um, I like uh, not just one brand, I have various brands represented here. There's Matco, Snap-on, Nipex, um, I've got Irwin, I've got uh, Weiss, you name it, I've got it. It's, it's cheap stuff all the way up to the most expensive. But um, there's different types of screwdrivers that are ratcheting screwdrivers. You can hold bits in the end so you can have multiple bits and those are nice to have. You don't need name brand. You can go get the cheapo of cheap from Lowe's, Home Depot, even Harbor Freight. I use a lot of Harbor Freight stuff. The number one thing I would say that you definitely need that they don't sell in this type of screwdriver line is a square bit. This is a number two square bit. This is a DeWalt uh, brand. You can get them in Milwaukee, Ryobi, and other ways they go into any quarter inch drive drill uh, quarter inch drive screwdriver so if you look at this i can take this bit out and i can put that in and it, and it automatically turns into a different screwdriver if you need an extra length this adds extra length um, you can get them in long and shorts different sizes different shapes different types these are all square bits all number two Okay, any screw in your RV is going to have a square head. Some will work with the Phillips head screwdriver, some will not, okay? But guaranteed, if a manufacturer has put that thing together and no one else has taken it apart, and this is the first time you're modifying it or changing or tightening or doing anything with it, square bit, number two. Picks are nice to have, um, ranging in different hook picks, straight picks. Um, this is just an inexpensive uh, set of four, and they make for great uh, working on various things that you need to maybe grab and pull with. Pliers, I always recommend having a pair of vice grips. These are great, especially if your piece of trim falls off and you need to remove those little nasty, pesky 16 gauge brad nails. You just basically clamp on that nice and tight and you roll down. So these are nice to have. You can have them in large size, small size, but I do recommend that you get them in either the seven or the, I believe this is a eight inch size. Um, another nice thing to have is the Nipex adjustable wrench. This is, I've seen this uh, used in many applications. It's made in Germany. Um, this is the Nipex brand. They're kind of pricey, but you can get them in a set of three or a set of four. And the nice part is it's basically a pair of pliers, channel locks, and an adjustable wrench all in one. Nice addition to have for your toolbox. 
I use these a lot, especially for plumbing fixtures and adjusting bolts and holding nuts and fasteners. The next thing on the list is also another Nipix brand. I like this because um, channel locks, as everybody has probably seen these, you open up the jaw, you slide the channel down, and then you find the size you need. The problem with these is as they wear out, the grooves right here will slip when you're trying to grip something. Now this is a giant pair. You don't need these on board your RV, but using them as an example. So when you go to clamp down on something, these grooves wear out and basically will pinch your fingers down here if it slips. So I don't really like that style. So I went over to the Nipex where it has a button you depress the button, you slide it to the size you want, and it locks in place. There's nothing you can do to get that to unlock. Okay, moving on. Nice set, they sell them in twos and three sets, singles. Uh, you can get them right on Amazon. Pretty much most of what I have here, except for the Matco Snap-on stuff, you can get on Amazon. Uh, a good pair of scissors. I like these. They will cut through plastic. They'll cut through real thin sheet metal. Usually aluminum is what I would, um, no steel, but definitely aluminum paneling. Those are nice to have. Inspection mirrors, nice to have, especially if you're in a, uh, a spot that's really tight. This one's nice because it's not only an inspection mirror, but it's a magnet as well. So you, it doubles as a multi-tool. This one has a light on it you can turn on so you can actually see what you're looking for. Nice addition to have in your toolbox. Cutters. Um, this is a angle pair. I like this because it fits in my hand well. I can get in tighter areas and different places. Those are nice. Uh, good for wire cutting. Uh, they recommend not using them for anything other than soft wire and things like that. Uh, these are going to be your standard cutters, crimpers, strippers, and anything in between. These are nice. Uh, this is a Snap-on brand, but they do sell them at Napa. Uh, Carlisle has their brand. Um, you can get it. Lyle is another brand. They're very nice to have. They're very easy to use. I have another video later on, on how to do this wiring stuff and how to strip and, and crimp. And We're moving on. Needle nose pliers. These are what they call long necks. These are the mini long necks. They're nice because um, they can get into tight areas. They're smaller. Uh, it's good for smaller hands as well. Um, I like the straight nose and the angled nose if you need something for that. Pry bars. Everybody needs a pry bar. Um, I like this pry bar. It's a nickname, AKA the toucan, because it kind of looks like toucan. If you flip it around the other side, it goes 180 degrees, and now it looks like somebody says a duck. I don't know, I don't see it. But that's a nice thing to have. Um, they sell those at Matco Tools, or you can get them at, uh, I think Harbor Freight sells those as well. Straight pry bars, also good to have. Hammers, let's talk about hammers. This is, uh, you've seen this in some of the videos I've used, especially for the brake video that I did for inspection of brakes and taking your hubs off. This is a softer plastic and this is a harder plastic. It's nice because then you can, um, you know, you're not going to damage something when hitting it unless you start wailing on it. A soft, what they consider soft, no blow, it has bead shot in here. So it sounds like a maraca when you shake it. Um, flat head, round head, good for most things. I don't recommend claw hammers because the claw hammers, um, you know, people start prying on it with the claw hammer, trying to take something off the wall. And then you end up, because the paneling is so thin, you break the paneling on the wall and then you have to repair something. This is also a nice thing to have. Uh, if you're using something, you have to straighten something that you wanna be gentle with. The black rubber side is a uh, more soft giving rubber and the white side is more dense. Nice to have. Okay, moving on, wrenches. Let's talk about wrenches real quick. So I recommend that everybody have at least a small set of wrenches, um, usually up to three quarter. 
okay? So here's what they call the stubby set. Um, I have it all the way up to 15 sixteenths in the stubby, but three quarter down to one quarter is a good range. The larger wrenches, um, you can have these. I've got this all the way up to one inch, all the way down to three eighths. This is an Icon brand. Both of these are Icon brand that I got from Harbor Freight. This is a ratcheting head, and this is a non-ratcheting head. It really depends on what you want. I like uh, having a set of each, and when I go on service calls or even just on vacation with my own RV, um, being that I am a full-time RVer as well, um, I like having the standard set, which is the SAE, which would be measured in fractions, one inch all the way down to quarter, or the metric setup, and the metrics is gonna be millimeters, usually uh, it's gonna be eight millimeter up to 19 millimeter. An adjustable wrench is nice. Um, you can have a small one like this or multiple types. Again, we talked about that versus the Nipex version. Um, I like these better. I can get more grip on them and I can clamp down harder and they have a tendency to not slip off the fastener. That's why I prefer these. I generally never use that. Let's talk about razor blades and uh, different types of things. Um, anything cheap, doesn't really matter. Find the lightest thing you can find. Changeable blades. These are nice because, you know, if you're gonna cut a hole in, in the thin paneling in the wall to install something, change a light out, change an outlet, do stuff, that's all you need. Just draw a line, square it off, and very gently go down it, it does the job well. That's what I use for punching holes. Allen wrenches. You will need a standard set and a metric set of Allen wrenches. Really, really important. These, um, there are so many different things where their Allen wrenches are used and, and um, this is a good set. I think I paid six or seven dollars each from Harbor Freight, their Pittsburgh tool. I use them every day on the job. Um, let's talk about um, these couple of items here. These are optional if you want them. I always recommend, especially if you're a full-time RVer, you have a pair of these. They're nice because this is for cutting hose, cutting pecs, and other things. It, it's a, a really nice tool to have. Um, scrapers. Uh, the five-in-one tool is my go-to tool. I use this all the time. I use this small little L-shaped angle uh, scraper for various different tight jobs. And if you need one, I like this. This is uh, very small. It's it, just to pull nails or try to pull paneling apart. Um, it's a nice addition. It's a, a mini uh, crowbar. This is completely an option. I threw this in at the last minute. What these are is a, uh, it's a metal tool. And so if you ever have damage from a flat tire that hits the J wrap that goes down the side of your RV, that, that aluminum tin that's on the side. If it gets bent or damaged and you have to keep going and keep pushing forward, these are nice because it'll save your hands from getting cut up. You can basically put the metal into the jaw, clamp down around it, and you can bend it out or in twisting it however you need to, to get it away from wherever the damage had happened. Good addition, these are a Lennox brand and you can use anything, I think it's a four inch jaw. Sockets, I recommend that anybody that has an RV has a basic socket kit. This is a small kit, um, it's Blue Point, and I really like this kit. This kit is a quarter inch drive, comes with everything you need, a little nut driver, the extensions, the ratchet, a flexible extension if you need to get into tight areas, and then little bits that you can put in your nut driver for that. Um, I also recommend don't just get a quarter drive, you need to get something a little bit bigger too because you're gonna need bigger sockets. The biggest one in this is 5 8 and you really should have something up to about a one inch socket. So that's gonna be in your 3 8 drive setup. So this is Blue Point by Snap-on. You can use this, but you know, go cheap. Harbor Freight, love their stuff. I started out with it and then I upgraded to these. Tape measure, 
really important. Have a basic tape measure. Don't have the one that has the lock down button in the front. Have the one that stops because you'll find that it'll annoy the snot out of you when you try have to remember to push the button and you're trying to measure something by yourself and it keeps retracting and you just you're going to throw the tape measure through your window i'm telling you i've almost done it myself so a good tape measure this is a 25 foot um, that's a go-to i use that every day all right safety glasses always a good thing to have a set of safety glasses on hand um, really important uh, anytime you're working around an rv you should have safety glasses now these are optional okay this is uh, a torque wrench electronic versus mechanical um, cobalt you can get them uh, if you prefer the electronic don't buy snap on i just have this because i got a great deal on it and i use it for a job um, but you can go to harbor freight get the icon brand you can get their Quinn brand, they're all relatively good. They last a long time, but if you're gonna do your own maintenance once a year, checking various things, you're gonna want these uh, at some point in time. If you're not planning on doing your own maintenance, checking wheel lugs, checking uh, hitch and bolts and nuts and fasteners that need to be torqued, if you're gonna have somebody else do it, then forget this, this is just an option. But if you're gonna live on it full time and you're gonna save the money and you're gonna do this, these are a worthwhile investment. Okay, so let's get into power tools, all right? Do you need them, do you not need them? I recommend that anybody who is full time that has a little bit of handiness in them, at least have a drill with drill bits and a impact tool that will run fasteners in and out, okay? This is... Uh, basically, it has presets. Um, you can run it in and out easily, quickly, and I like them. Um, if you're putting a lot of lumber together or you're changing something or you're doing a remodel in your RV, these two things are vital. If you're just doing general maintenance, again, these two things are vital. Uh, you don't have to buy rigid. You can buy any brand you want on the market. Just at least have something in this range. Rechargeable, lithium, love it. Next, if you have a RV that you can change your own tires with, I would recommend this because if you're sitting on the side of the road, especially on the opposite side of where safety is, meaning the roadside where traffic is moving by and you have to change a tire fast, this is going to change it fast. You're going to be able to take your lugs off and put your lugs back on. Okay, so this is an option. I like this. It's... Uh, it's 100, 250 foot pounds of torque for removal, and uh, you can really over torque if you're not careful. So make sure, again, we talked about torque wrenches. If you're gonna do your own tire removal and maintenance, a good thing to take it off quickly, but it's an option. A level. Everybody must have a level, because if for some reason your leveling system fails, if you have six point, or you need to reset it, or you have a faulty whatever, a level is a good thing. This is magnetic, so it sticks to any surface that's magnetic. And uh, this is Empire brand I got from Home Depot. Staple gun. This works with a standard T50 staple and various other types. Um, this was uh, the carbon fiber version. I liked it. It was cool. I bought it. But um, if you need a, to staple a piece of carpet or something, maybe your floor gets torn, you know, as you're bringing your slide in and out, to keep it from getting further damage, use some staples. Cheap, easy. Let's talk about, first and foremost, wire ties, okay? Wire ties are important, all right? Different sizes, different types. This one is used for wrapping wires, and then once you wrap the wire up you can put a screw or a fastener into the wall and that's what that's for you can see the hole and that's what you basically want to have make that flat there um, so that you can wrap wire bundles up and you can attach them to walls or attach them to studs or attach them to things this is for attaching wires different slants this is an 8 inch this is 11 inch and this is a 15 inch this is a 120 pound test, okay, in strength. I recommend carrying at least these and at least these, okay? But these all are good. 
This is great if your awning gets messed up and you have to retain the awning back against the coach. You, these are 120 pounds a piece rated and you can put two or three around your awning arms and you can be good to go back on the road again. All right, let's talk about butt connectors. All right, these are the heat shrink style, which if you want to heat shrink, you're gonna need a torch. All right, something in that general thing to be able to heat shrink them. You can buy the standard non-heat shrink, non-weather resistant ones, same exact thing, but you're gonna want those. They're nice, love them. You can store them in old food containers. This was a dull fruit container, or you can go more elaborate and you can buy something like this and then it's got little pockets where you can put and organize. Really nice, okay? All right, moving on. Move this stuff out of the way. Let's talk about, well, there went my WD-40, folks. Uh, see, this is filmed live and ready to go. We're just gonna let it lie there. So, different types of ways of sealing up things. We have roof sealant, which is called lap sealant. This is Dicor product. You can also get it in a uh, Alpha series, which is by LCI. They make one as well. They all do the same thing, self-leveling, non-leveling. Always have at least the color of your choice on hand, okay? Important for resealing and uh, roof through fittings. Anything that's on your roof that you need to seal up, that's what this is for. Roof tape. If you get damage, you're going to want to have some of this stuff. This is the Eternabon brand, but Dicor makes brands. Everybody has some sort of tape. This stuff is great for taping up any tears or uh, anything that would happen damage-wise to your roof membrane. Also, on a side note, you can use this for repairing fiberglass if it's got cracks or holes or things in it until you can have it uh, completely repaired properly. Caulk gun, you're gonna want one of these, especially if you're gonna have different types of caulk. And this just so happens to be a Starbright product, marine silicone caulk. I recommend this brand highly. We use it all the time, works great. And we're gonna do a series on sealants and things later, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna go in depth. You're gonna need other things. This is a CRC lubricant. This CRC is uh, got uh, Teflon in it. It's good for any aluminum parts. It helps fight against corrosion and it helps against a lot of other things. So um, it's kind of a controversy whether you're gonna use it on a Schwintech slide out, but we did a Schwintech uh, post a while back on Facebook, a textual post, and this was the product that everybody was asking about. So if you're still curious, it's the CRC with PTFE. Uh, they recommend that for any moving parts on a swing check, but you can use them on anything. I use it on all kinds of stuff. You're gonna want uh, some alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Uh, this is 91 proof. This is great. Uh, I put a little spray handle on there. I can spray it like that and I can clean things. I can disinfect and I can also clean off any residue from sticky stuff that it's left behind. I can also prep so uh, I can prep the area to be able to use um, the product to seal properly. WD-40, that's been my go-to. I know it's not really the, the actual thing you should be using in the industry, but I love it. This is great. I buy the one that has the bendable, reachable, movable straw on it because I can get into tight areas and it can spray well. Like it, love it, use it all the time. Um, PB Blaster works as well. All right, so let's talk about electrical real quick. All right, you don't need 100 feet of wire. These are both uh, used spools, but I recommend that you have at least 25 or 50 feet of each doesn't matter what color pick your color whatever your favorite color is um, the key is uh, 14 gauge and 12 gauge this is the typically this the gauge of wire that you're going to use if for some reason you have a wire breakage or something deteriorates and you have to cut a section out and butt connect in you want to you're going to use one of these two most of the time it's 14 or 12. 
Okay, talking about different types of testers and different types of things that you can use. Let's talk about, um, real quickly, we're gonna go into RV electrical in another segment in another video. But uh, I always recommend if you have a 30 amp service that you get a 30 amp to 20 amp plug, which allows you to use this handy dandy tester here. This is a Klein tool, recommend it, it's 20 bucks, worth every penny. I use it all the time. Uh, but you can put it in there, you can test your 30 amp and also 20 amp plugs. Uh, you can use this also on your uh, RV receptacles to test GFCI, which is ground fault circuit interrupters, and that's a handy tool to have. This, again, we're gonna do all the RV electrical later. I'm just showing you things I have. This is made by Lyle. Um, this is a really cool product. You put this, and this is great for testing batteries. This is 12 volt only. Do not use this on 120 volt AC. This is DC only voltage, okay? But you can test your batteries. You can see if your batteries are working. You can see if your battery charger is working. Whatever this is touching will light up correspondingly and give you a voltage reading. So if you're touching a positive lead on a 12 volt system, this will be red and give you an indication. If you touch this to the ground side, this will give you the voltage and it will turn green, indicating ground. It's kind of cool. I like it. I use it all the time. It's a quick, easy thing um, to be able to get voltage quickly. Last in the voltage range. Let's talk about this tool real quick. Okay, again, we're not talking about the ins and outs of how this tool works, but this is a Klein tool as well. As you can tell, I kind of like Klein, mostly because I'm an orange freak and I love orange and green and various other weird colors that combination together. So you're gonna have your voltage leads. You're gonna have different ranges in here. This is perfect. This is $90 from Home Depot. You can buy Klein, you can buy Southwire, but the big thing you wanna remember is that you want an amp clamp that is rated to 400 amps AC and DC, okay? Let me repeat that. You want a voltmeter with an amp clamp that reads up to 400, you can go up to 600, but 400 amps DC and AC in the clamp because they sell some or just AC. So you need the AC DC clamp, okay? But this also does temperature, it does Hertz, it can test capacitors on ACs, it can do continuity tests, it does amperage and voltage, and it also doubles as a non-contact tester. So when you turn this on and you hold this button down where it says NCV, non-contact voltage, you press that button down, you bring the, this tip here to wherever you have a hot lead and there will be a red light that flashes and a beep correspondingly. Okay, so again, we're gonna go into all of that but let's, uh, let's wrap it up with what I consider tool storage. All right, so you need to understand what you're gonna store all of what I've just shown you in, where you're gonna store it. Really important, okay? First of all, is it gonna be in a sealed compartment? Is that compartment going to be waterproof or water resistant? If it is, then you can have an open top case or carrying set up like this or bag. If it's going to be where it's possibly going to get wet, then you're going to want to look more into these options, which are waterproof cases. And this will hold your tools. It also is impact resistant, and you can also doubles as a small step stool. You can stand on top of either one of these cases. So it really is up to you how you want to store your tools. What's the best option for you to store your, to store your tools? and um, what tools are the best for you, okay? One last thing I should add that I forgot to mention, which it's staring me right in the face, fuses. Always have the appropriate 12 volt amp rated fuses that you actually have uh, in your RV. If you have 30 amp, you need 30 amp. If you have 15 amp, you need 15 amp. If you have two amp, you need two amp. So on and so on have an assortment of fuses. So with that said, 
I know there's things I missed. I know that uh, there's a whole lot more tools that you can carry. You may or may not need them. But what I want you to understand through all of this is this is kind of an overview. So in the comments below, feel free to add your cool favorite tool that you've run across or that you even made yourself to get the job done. As a full-time RVer, sometimes we have to be part MacGyver and part handyman and all the other things in between. So thanks for joining Maintenance Monday again. And as always, enjoy the journey.